you know, and let it, because that's what you need to start with. Um, but you're right, that there's no way those kids are going to go to a coach. You yep. know, even if it's a misunderstanding, they're just, um, they need, they need friends <laughs> more than they need teammates, you yeah. know, but, uh, as in uh, someone to pass the ball or get the ball from. No, I understand. Well, that was the essence of the children's book. And hearing enough from the principals and the other adults, I, I eventually I took the plunge and I uh, meandered my way through and uh, an adult nonfiction book. It was called Building Good Teammates, the story of my Mount Rushmore, a coaching epiphany and that none. And really the coaching epiphany of it is, you know, of all the great life lessons that that, uh, you know, kids learn through sports participation, you know, hard work, dedication, commitment time management, of all these great things, the one thing that coaches should be teaching above all is how to be a good teammate. You know, it's, it's nice to teach kids to be competitive, but being competitive should take a backseat to being a good teammate because that's like the one life skill that they're going to use and need for the rest of their life. Uh, and that's, that's what we really need to get coaches to do. Yeah, and, I, and anyone who would argue that we're making them soft – um, I'll tell you right now, the the hardest I've ever run up and down a court, a field, was to be there for my teammates. Mm -hmm. You know, it's because, hey, I got to be there. Whether it was, you know, to be there in position for the offense or to stop something on defense, you ran no matter how tired you were because those were your friends. And the ultra competitiveness comes out. So I'm with you. I think it uh, takes care of itself, the winning, when you have that type of bond that you can't get from statistics or anything else. I think that sometimes that's an unfortunate, uh, you know, I don't know, it's a, it's a wrong label that a good teammate gets. They're, yeah. they're, not, passive, they're not nice. I mean, being competitive <laughs> is part of being a good teammate. Having a good work ethic and doing it for your team is part of being a good teammate. Now, I, I don't know, somewhere along the way, I stumbled across uh, a definition of what's a man. And, and, and being a good teammate certainly is not, you know, gender specific. But uh, I, I've used this definition with, with, with groups I've talked to is uh, the difference between a boy and a man is a boy does what he wants to do. A man does what he has to do. And the essence of that is you're taking action for a higher purpose, you know, your team. Uh, and there's no age limit to being a boy or a man. It's what you're doing and why you're doing it. And I think that was the essence of, of being a good teammate. You can do something for higher purpose, not just yourself. And since you're a basketball guy, that was a sport that um, I love playing as well. But being, well, I'm at 5'10 now. So, uh, you know, at 5'8", without not a whole lot of vertical uh, extension, um, I had to do things for my team, like stand there and get run over. <laughs> and I took a lot of pride in taking charges because... Yeah, the, that was that, your thing. Yeah, I sure wasn't going to block any shots, okay? That's all <laughs> there was. And my teammates would come over, and they'd pick me up. And they'd yeah. say, great. And then they'd say, okay, now let's get the ball in your hands, because I also couldn't score. My job was to put it in the hands of people that could score. And I liked doing it. They knew it. And... I got such a thrill out of doing things them because they always said, nice, way to go, whatever it was. And it, it's an amazing feeling. It, again, even at the low, low level that I played at, uh, and these guys are still my friends. In fact, I'm going to be seeing a lot of them this weekend, uh, 30 years later uh, at a high school reunion. But we are still, we still think about each other going back to those days um, because it, it's a bond that you, you honestly can't break it for life once, once you're a real teammate. It really is. It really is. Yeah. So, well, I get into the adult book. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, the message transcends basketball by this point, and really all sports. Uh, and it start gets it, it gets into life. And, you know, and writing that book was, you know, somewhat therapeutic for me, because it, it forced me to go back and look at some of those teams I played on, and look at my own past, and you know, ask a very poignant question. Was I a good teammate? And I don't know that I, that I necessarily was. Uh, I don't know if I knew how to be a good teammate. Uh, so I started looking, well, 
where did I learn about this? And what makes a good teammate? And you care, share, care, shared, listen, and the virtue of trust. And where do all these things come play? And I, and I think we all have our own personal Mount Rushmore. It's those four individuals who had the biggest impact on our life. And for many, many former athletes, it's their coaches. And that was certainly, you know, part of it for me. So I looked at those men, uh, my former coaches, and uh, you know, I had a, a mentor, a boss who uh, I initially hired me. And I looked at all of them, and what I learned from them. But the person who put it all together, who really, you know, epitomized what it meant to be a good teammate, was the most unlikely of individuals, an 80-year-old nun. What was her name? Sister Eric Marie, and she is fascinating. <laughs> I, I, it, 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 she, I don't know. I like to s- describe her. She's got a, a, you know, a little Mary Poppins ish to her. She kind of like floats into a room. When she walks in the room, she, her, she's this bubbly, overwhelming personality. There's, uh, you know, I joke. I, ca- I call her the Penguin, and I don't know where it's. A, I was a Blues Brothers fan. I was going <laughs> to say yes. You got me on that one. Excellent. <laughs> you know, so uh, she. It would be. Hey, anybody seen the Penguin? The Penguin, and she kind of whimsically would you know, go along with it but there's nothing about sister eric marie that has a ruler smacking people on the hands or any other stereotypical <laughs> you know, parochial school none there's nothing like that about her she's just the kindest sweetest person and, and what she really got me to do is think about you know my purpose and what i was doing with a co- you know as a coach you know and she gave the kind of perspective that only someone of her her level of, of life experience and her level of wisdom you know could really offer now, where where did this take place? And I guess what point in your career? Uh, well, I'd been coaching for well over a decade at the college level. Plus, I, you know, I'd been a high school coach before that. So, it, it's funny. Why? Why? You know, I went into coaching the same reason you know, almost every other coach did because we were players and we didn't want it. We didn't want it to end. And right. We enjoyed it. And, and you know, to some degree, you're kind of lost because you don't know what else to do. So you just kind of stick with your comfort zone. And the problem is, you know, coaches that, that go that route, you know, eventually you burn out because, you know, you, it's, you, you burn out not because of what you do, but you forget why you do it. You know, as you know, one of my favorite authors, John Gordon, likes to say, mm-hmm. uh, and, and, you know, that, some of that was happening with me. And I remember very specifically being at a convention and walking by, there was the uh, Fellowship of Christian Athletes had a, a booth set up and they had a big banner in front of their booth that said, a coach will impact more lives in a season than most people will their whole lifetime. And I thought, wow, man, that's profound. And I thought, that's what I want to do with my life. I want to impact lives. That's why I wanted to be a coach. And, and you know, and I think when I reached this point with, you know, with Sister Eric, that's what I was really, you know, diving. I was looking for a way to impact more lives. And, and really, um, the books, and this journey uh, has allowed me an opportunity to do uh, to do just that. And I've got, now I've gotten out of coaching. Uh, I've started my own business, and now I travel the country. I, I as a professional speaker, uh, and I speak to groups and speak to, to corporations uh, about what it means to be a good teammate and how to be a better teammate and why you should be a better teammate. You know, and I've got a, a social media following has grown. Uh, uh, unexpectedly to me but you know i'm very grateful for the the social media following we've you know in just a year's time i've had ten thousand new twitter followers and uh my blog following has now grown I, I think i'm on a path where i think i can really make a difference and i want to and that's a central theme the central theme to this show is just that that um and again it, you're your tweets, blogs, all that attracted me immediately to see what was going on. I'm happy to be, you know, one of the 10,000 uh, that are following you. Um, it's just that you're working hard, and you mentioned earlier you're working on a third book. But um, I'm going to guess you don't, you might be tired, but I got to believe it doesn't feel like a grind. It doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's the beauty of it all. And, and be honest, uh, I love coaching. And coaching, didn't always feel like a grind. It was tiring, and there's long days, and you know, at the college level, recruiting is not always fun. It's, it can be a very humbling experience. Uh, 
but this I really I found a higher level of fulfillment because I feel like what I really want to do if you, know, you go back to that that the banner of uh, impacting lives if one coach impacts that many lives what if you impact coaches you know the amount of lives you impact is you know, amplified tenfold exactly and that's really what I have the opportunity to do now because you know some of my my uh, best clients are school districts um uh, who bring me in to seek to their, you know, their faculty development days. Well, and, and you've inspired me to keep going on with people like yourself that I was thinking the same thing, which was, yeah, I enjoy coaching my kids' teams. Um, and sure, you can affect uh, a dozen or 20 lives a season. And then you start getting back to the rest of your life as your kids get older and you run out of time and you miss that impact. And then you start realizing again, for people out there who have a gift for coaching, but maybe not the time, passing that gift on to other coaches or teachers or managers, again, all the things Lance is talking about here, um, every scenario, it's amazing that you can be helping thousands of people without ever meeting them every year. It's, uh, It's quite amazing. I get blown away. You know, so many bad things said about social media and the dangers of it and, you know, fake news and those things. I'm sure there's truth in that, but I'm also a recipient of the benefit of social media. Uh, Where this has grown and, you know, the people I've connected with, uh, I I doubt would have been possible without it. You know, I get book orders from all over the country. I get... I get letters now and really heartfelt, gut-wrenching emails uh, from parents and coaches and, and people about how much that meant to me. You know, I really relate to that. Can I you, had a... Can, say, yeah. can you recall, uh, again, without the specifics, but can you recall the gist of some of those uh, emails or letters? Uh, well, just, uh, you know, uh, last week I got some pictures sent to me from a school district in uh, Raleigh, Mississippi. And it was a high school girls uh, varsity basketball team. And the coach had bought the girls books, of uh, the children's book, Be a Good Teammate. And they had taken them to the elementary school. And each of the girls was reading them to a classroom in the elementary school. And he sent me pictures of them. And you see the pictures. You see that, man, that book transcends all those things that are dividing, you know, the country. Race, socioeconomic levels. It's, it's bringing people together, which is exactly what sports are supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and I, I look at those pictures and I see and think, man, that bumpy plane ride led to this. I got a, an email from a mother uh, not long ago, and, and her son had tried out for this team, for his basketball team. <laughs> and he, you know, maybe you can relate to this, and I mean that in the least offensive way possible. <laughs> He's vertically, your son, your son was vertically challenged. I hear and, that. And he attended a, a large high school in his state. And she said it was one of the biggest high schools. And he just was just, he had tried out for the team three years in a row and got cut three straight years. So he's gone back again. And she says, as a mother, I remember all three of those years, him coming in the car and just crying and how just hard it was for her as a parent to watch him do this. And here he's going to do it again. And she was just really reluctant to encourage him to do that. But he did it. And, and my advice I'd written, uh, not long, well, I don't know, a week or so, a couple of weeks prior to that, and she'd shared what I'd said in my advice with her son. And the advice was, you know, how important it is to make a connection with your coach. You know, show them that you might not be the fastest, you might not be the tallest, but you're going to bring value to your team because of what you're willing to do and your attitude and, you know, your, your be a good teammateness, if that's a word, I don't know, you know, what you can do for the team. And, and I, I listed a list of things you you can do one of which was you know go greet your coach every day when you come into practice and after you leave you ask me is there anything else i can do to help the team today coach and then every day when your player when players come into the court be the first one out there and give them a high five welcome every one of them so you kind of set the tone the energy level for practice and i give it some suggestions things that this kid doesn't so last day of tryouts comes and goes and the kid gets in the car and he's crying and the mother says uh, you know Maybe it's just not meant to be. She says, no, Mom, you don't understand. I made it this year. <laughs> now, doesn't that make you well up when you, it, when you think about it all? It does. And I think that people are afraid to give that advice. I mean, that was the advice I was given 40 years ago, which is 
whatever they ask you to do, do it as fast as you